Baraka to Yahweh, Baraka to Yahweh Shai. All praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Kakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who taught us the truth and who rule well. Peace, love, salutation, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. In the wake of this COVID 19 outbreak, whether it's real or fake, all right, we know that the Most High Heavenly Father all right, has Esau doing certain things within the earth. All right, there's a lot of protests that are going on within America. And these are so-called white people, which are Edomites, gun-toting white people All right, that are tired of being on lockdown, that are tired of, you know, having our right, businesses shut down all right, because of the COVID-19, the coronavirus. And they want these governments to open their states back up so that they can go back to living the normal life in which they're used to living. All right, they're going to their different legislation, uh, uh, um, legislative branch, branches, you know, or gov government branches. All right, and they're protesting, all right, because they want this place to be opened back up. You know, which a lot of them are waking up to the fact that there's some something fishy going on all right, concerning this whole coronavirus ordeal. All right, whether it be a real virus or whether it be a fake one. But anyways, on the screen, all right, there's an image. And the caption of the image reads, protesters block traffic while others stood on the steps around the Michigan State Capitol. All right, because just recently, all right, there was a protest at the Michigan State Capitol, all right, where there was a bunch of Edomites that, that went, went up here, all right, and they're threatening with violence, all right, if, if that there will be violence, all right, if they don't open this thing back up, which eventually these protests or these uproars are going to grow even more violent than what they, what they are at this moment. All right, and they're going to turn into insurrections, all right, to the point of the people trying to, you know, overthrow the government. All right, which these things that are going on in the world right now, all right, they are written about that they will happen during this time, according to the scriptures. All right, which I'm going to get into those scriptures, but I'm going to read a little bit of this article. It says, uh, Mitch Album. The Michigan I know doesn't lose its head in a p pandemic, which a lot of people are losing their head within this pandemic, and they will lose their head in even further because they suffer from something that is known as normalcy bias, which the definition for normalcy bias, and this goes for ma mainly all, right, all people within the world. All right, because they're used to things being normal. They're used to things being one way. And they're not used to that normal being broken. And this is this is the, the, the doing of, the, of their elites, their, their governments, the people that are over them. They wanted them to be like this. So that when they do change things from being normal and they started to collapse society... All right, that people will be willing to accept anything as a solution, which eventually that solution is going to be all right, the rich elites, the ones that are in charge, offering them the mark of the beast, which they will willingly accept because they will be in a great, uh, 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 they will have a great desire for things to return back normal. But this is normalcy bias. Normalcy bias or normality bias is a tendency for people to believe that things will function in the future the way they normally have functioned in the past and therefore to underestimate both the likelihood of a disaster and its possible effects so they don't ad adequately are prepared for the worst case scenario because they're used to things being a certain way so therefore when you tell them or warn them that things are going to change or something is going to happen all right they don't believe you all right until it until it actually happens Normalcy bias, the biggest threat to your survival during disaster. Normalcy bias is a psychological state or denial people enter, enter in 
the event of a disaster as a result of which they underestimate the possibility of the disaster. So people will lose their head. All right. And as of right now, the Michigan that you once knew or the United States of America that you once knew, that's gone. All right. It's never going to return back to that again. Now, reading on in the article, it says, I don't usually reference Bible anecdotes, but this seemed too fitting. In the book of Exodus, when the Israelites are freed from bondage and flee across the Red Sea, all they want is protection from the pursuing Egyptians. All right, they, don't, they, they don't want to die. When they see, uh, when the sea collapse or on their enemy, they rejoice and thank the Lord who saved them but soon they start complaining and afterwards wondering a mere seven weeks are they grow impatient when Moses ascends, ascends a mount a mountain to receive the Ten Commandments something are the Lord promises will protect them forever when Moses doesn't return exactly on time the people revolt they built the golden calf as some as something new to believe in and well, you know how how that works out, which this is a horrible analogy. All right, this is a horrible way of applying all right, this scripture, which this doesn't apply to you at all. And it doesn't apply to your situation at all, man. All right, which this, this individual is trying to say that all right, the reason for the lockdown is to provide protection, is to provide safety. All right, the reason for this lockdown all right, it's to cause mass panic and, and, and chaos. All right, it's to cause people to become afraid. All right, to the point of being in the state of mind that you're in right now. All right, this is the reason for all right, this lockdown. So this is a horrible way of applying that scripture. All right, this is a horrible analogy. Which I'm going to give the, 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 the proper analogy all right, for the situation and what's going on. And this is the reason why you don't go to Esau to, to get the scriptures broken down to you. Because he won't explain them the right way. All right, really, the ones that, 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 that Exodus would apply to, all right, because we're in the second Exodus. This would apply to the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Really a, a better scripture that will apply all right, within the situation of what's going on because America and all of the rest of the world is being smitten, man. All right, the scripture says that I will smite Egypt again with plagues. This is a better scripture that would apply. This is Exodus 10 and 7. And Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? All right, let the man go that they may serve Yahweh their power. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? So Yahweh Bashmi Awashai is destroying this modern Egypt, which is America. All right, Egypt is a, is a, is a, a spiritual name for America, as it states within the book of Revelations, the 11th chapter, all right, in the 8th verse, which reads, it says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So this place... All right, that holds the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right, this place is spiritually known as Egypt, according to the scriptures. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. And thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond woman, and no man shall buy you. So this right here entails how the so-called Negroes were brought into this place which is known as America, but spiritually, according to the Bible, is known as Egypt. All right, they were brought into the house of bondage. All right, because Egypt is also known as the house of bondage. Exodus 20 and 2, I am Yahweh that power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So when you read Deuteronomy 28 and 68, all right, you can use interchangeably the house of bondage with the word Egypt. So it can read, and Yahweh shall bring thee into the house of bondage again with ships. Who were brought into the house of bondage? The so-called Negroes. 
the so-called Latinos and Native Americans were here already, but they uh, uh, together were oppressed in the land by the so-called white man who oppressed them in the land of America. All right, in the land which is spiritually known as our right, Sodom in Egypt. Jeremiah 50 and 33, which reads, it says, Thus set Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast and refused to let them go. All right, so the rich elites refused to let the children of Israel go. And because of all of their oppression, because of all of their wickedness, because of all of their corruption and their evil deeds towards the children of Israel, this is the reason why America is being hit with all of the things that it's hit with. And your forefathers knew eventually that these things will come upon the earth. And that's the reason why Thomas Jefferson goes on by uh, uh, quoting, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and that justice cannot sleep forever. So this is the justice from the Most High Heavenly Father that is coming upon your nation. So really, the scripture that applies is Exodus 10 and 7. Really, you should be crying until the elites of this world asking them to relinquish and to free the children of Israel that they refuse to let go. The children that they are taking crafty counsel to try to destroy. All right, that they are trying to put together a census and put together different things to count the heads of them so that they can get rid of them, so that they can try to kill them, so that they can wipe them out. And not only to relinquish them and to free them, all right, to give back all of the things that they have taken from them, even the land, all right, that these people that claim to be Jews but are not Jews, all right, have it within their possession in which they're not going to do this. So what's going to happen is, Yahweh Shai, who is the one whom the world only Jesus called Jesus Christ, has to come and to fight against them and to take them out of power. And this place, all right, this world that they hold within their possession has to be hit with plagues. The modern day pharaohs that are ruling over the world, according to the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, verse 17, is the rich elite banking family in which Yahweh, our power, the power of heaven and earth, have put them in a position of power to rule over the way that they are ruling and to do these things that they have done to the children of Israel. So that he can judge them after the same manner that he judged Egypt, so that he can make his name great. Romans the ninth chapter, verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I may shew my power in thee, that and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So our power is declaring his name throughout all the earth by way of having men stand in the stead of Moses and Aaron and to prophesy against these pharaohs that are ruling over, all right, against these elites that are ruling over of the nation of Edom, the rich elite banking family, and to tell them all of the things that Yahweh is going to do before he do them. So that people will see and know and the name of Yahweh may be declared. All right, the name of his son may be declared. Going back to the article, I bring this up because we are in 2020 pursued by a plague that has that has us terrified. All right, these these people are terrified. They're afraid. They're scared, man. All right, in which the, the, the elites, the ones that are in charge are pushing out that fear. All right. They're, they 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 have a, uh, a a propaganda, all right, to push fear. A shutdown is in place because nearly all all science and medical experts suggest, all right, it is the best way to to stop the threat. And and at the start, we were grateful for the protection. We saw the slow but positive results. But after less than seven weeks, our patients in pockets, are right, seems to be running out. And some of us are throwing angry protests and demanding freedom, this protection, all right, from this protection and looking for a new golden calf to believe in. One rooted in anger, our right, politics and, and emotional knee-jerk leader who says he's leaving things uh, to the states, then tweets, liberate Michigan. Which explains why I got 
so many questions last week from friends around the country who saw a protest in Lansing, Lansing that featured a long, uh, a long jams of cars, people screaming like her up, and a in a uh, phalanx of gun-toting men in close proximity on the Capitol steps. So these are Edomites are, that are going to the capital of Michigan are locked and loaded, man. All right, these are these are not the 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 the, the Israelites that you claim to be the violent ones. All right, these are Edomites that are that are resorting to, you know, taking their guns and going to the capital and to protest. All right, causing uproars and commotions. All right, which the Bible speaks of will happen. Reading on, it says, and they asked him, what's going on in your state? All right, here's my response. All right, the Michigan I know. That's not my state. All right, that's not my Michigan. A few thousand folks in a state of 10 million is not representative of anything, all right, besides a pocket of citizens who want to express their frustration. So here it is. Eventually, it's going to be way more people than this protesting. All right, and there's going to be things that go on, all right, that render this place unfamiliar to you. All right, the state that you live in. All right, the country that you live in is no longer going to seem familiar. All right, it's not going to be that peaceful place of carelessness all right, that you're used to. All right, it's going to be a place of instability and insurrection. It's going to be a place full of uproars and commotion. All right, these right here are the times that signify the end of the world, man, and the end of Esau Edom. But the Michigan I know, while entitled to practice its First Amendment rights, doesn't defy common sense by clustering together during a virus pandemic or that can spread itself through someone's breathing. All right, which these people are starting to wake up that it got to be something more than, than, than what they've been telling you. But, uh, than the, the fear propaganda that they've been pushing out there. But anyways, these protests are happening. And the side of these protests is, a, is an evident sign and token of the times that we are living in. This is 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter, and reading from verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs which I have told thee before, all right, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the, in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as, all right, all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and uh, uh, beginnings and wonder and powerful works and ending in effects and signs. All right, so these are signs that this place is going to hell down, man. All right, now what did it say that you should see? All right, and when you see these things, you would know that you're in that that you're in the time when the highest will begin to visit the world. Er earthquakes and uproars. What is an uproar? Going over to Google to define what an uproar is. So like it, bear with me, Baba Kasha. The definition from uproar: a loud and impassioned noise or disturbance, a public expression of protest and outrage so these people not only within america not only within the states of america all right but around the world you know are in a public expression of protest or outrage against its leaders all right but to focus on the things that are going on within america man all right these are signs of the time all right these are signs that we are at the end and more of these things are going to begin to happen, all right, because people are frustrated. Our right, people are tired of not having any money, running out of money because they have to still eat. They still have to pay bills. All right, they still have to pay their rent. They still have to pay their mortgage. They still have to pay for food. They still have to pay for water. They still have to pay for electricity. They still have to buy gas. All right, but, but they're laid off from their job there's there's over 22 million people that have filed for unemployment 
All right, and that unemployment isn't enough to sustain them throughout the month. So these people are ready for this government to open the states back up so that they can get back to being good slaves, man. Now, are the elites going to open this thing back up? You know, that's to be known. That's to be seen. You know, if it happens, all right, things could go back to normal. You know, but but like Apostle Tahar said, you know, that could give people the opportunity to prepare next time. But why would they let this good disaster go to waste? All right, they got the people right where they want them. Luke 21 and going down to 9, it says, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Really, the end isn't going to come until Esau implement the mark of the beast. Now, before he implements that mark, he wants people to be in a state of commotion. And what is the, the, the Greek definition of the word commotion? Strong's G181. Akatastasia. 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 Instability. A state of disorder. Disturbance. Confusion. Or they want people in a state of confusion. They want people in a state of instability. In a state of disturbance. All right. Disorder. Commotion. Confusion. All right. Making tumults. Another Greek word for insurrection would be found within Mark the 15th chapter in verse 7, which reads, because what is commotion? You know, the Greek word there is going to say stasis, all right, which means a standing. People are going to stand up or make a stand against the government, all right, which is in uh, an insurrection, all right, strife, civil strife. So they're going to call themselves making a stand against the government. All right. Just like uh, Barabbas all right, in the company that was with him. Mark 15 and 7. It says, and there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrections with him and had committed murder in the insurrection. So this is a mind state that the people are getting ready to be in. All right. They're getting ready to make insurrections against all right, this, this new modern day Rome, man. All right, and what is the Greek word there for insurrections? A standing, all right, a station, a state. So they're going to make a stand against the government, all right, which is going to be an insurrection. They're going to rise up against, all right, the government to fight a violent uprising, all right, against an authority or government. And all of these things are written in the scriptures of the signs of what's going to happen close to the end of the world. And why? Because as these plagues grow within the world, and as more and more things begin to happen, all right, they're going to wake up. And they're going to realize that these people that are leaders over them are really, really, they don't have their best interest in mind. Going over to 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, verse 8. I will hold my tongue no more as touching all right, their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which... They wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cries unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. All right, which is us. All right, we're constantly complaining towards Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And as we complain, all right, our prayers are being heard because the Lord has turned back into us a pure language. All right, He have turned back into us, all right, the, the, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding according to the scriptures, and also the true language, which is the Hebrew. And we are calling upon you, how about Shimei was shy? All right, and he's hearing our voice and he's getting ready to send us a savior. All right, and he's going to deliver us from this Egypt, from this oppression, not only within America, but around the world. And, and signs of him delivering us is these plagues that are hitting this world. Isaiah 19 and 20. And it shall come uh, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Now, when you re realize what happened all right, to Egypt, all right, it's similar to that movie, The Fifth Wave, all right, before 
All right, the children of Israel were let go out of the land of Egypt. There were 10 plagues that happened. All right, the last and final plague was all right, the death angel all right, going through the land and killing all of the first, firstborn, which that death angel was the word of the Most High Heavenly Father, all right, which is Yahawashai, the one whom the world eagerly called Jesus Christ. Well, Yahawashai is going to do the same thing for us during these times. All right, and he's going to pass through the land within the chariots, all right, which are being uh, uh, seen within the skies, a great fathership. And he's going to send his angels to gather the elect and simultaneously, he's going to kill within those ships. And then thermonuclear destruction is going to rain down upon this place, man. And that's going to be the last and final plague, which instead of just the, the, the firstborn dying during this time, it's going to be men, women, and child of all different ages all right, that are destroyed within this place. All right, so we're calling upon our power all right, with one consent, and he's hearing our voice. All right, and he's visiting the world. All right, for the things that they have done to his people, all right, for the, the oppression that they have laid upon them. Going back to Exodus 15 and 9, And therefore said Yahweh, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. All right, in which I made the statement earlier, Esau will have to free us, all right, from not only from America, but from around the, the world where he has us captives. All right, and he will also have to give us the land back. But Esau can't recompense the Most High Heavenly Father a life. All right, and you have taken trillions of Israelites' lives, man. So therefore, you're going to reap what you have sown. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter, and I will suffer them no now. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and with a stretched, stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. And I will destroy all the land thereof. So this place, America, is being smitten with plagues. All right, because this is the new modern day Egypt. All right, for the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are being oppressed here by the Edomites. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with plagues and the punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. And they, and they that till the ground shall mourn. For the seed shall fail through the blasting in hell uh, with the fearful consolation. All right, and you are having um, farmers that are destroying certain quite, quite, uh, crops, all right, and, 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 and certain meat, you know, from animals are, are um, infected with this coronavirus disease. All right, they're saying, and, all right, and these crops can't be sold, all right, because there's no one to buy them. All right, so they're being destroyed. All right, this is the Most High Heavenly Father visiting this place, and it's long overdue. All right, but things are going to get very worse for this place, man. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. And there shall be sedition among men in evading one another. And they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their... In their uh, their power so stasis all right or commotions also is dealing with seditions all right a, a, a violent uprising against the government let's grab that word for sedition all right this is the definition for sedition it says conduct or speech inciting people to rebel against the authority of a state or a monarch all right so what you're seeing is people are rebel against their government all right rebel against these certain laws and, and things that are set in place and as people begin to rebel more and more they're going to eventually all right, enforce more draconian law, uh, draconian laws all right which is going to lead to our right, forced lockdowns which is going to lead to the military and the army are right, stepping in all right this is what they what the elites want all right they want this place to be with uh, like a dystopian state all right to where they have total control and, and they and they use violence to rule over. All right, and eventually, when people get sick and tired of it, all right, and they really want things to go back to normal, they'll accept all right, the solution. Was that solution is going to be the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. All right, and things may return back to normal for some, those that take it, but eventually they're going to be destroyed within thermonuclear destruction. All right, so this is Revelation 13 and 16. It says, 
and he calls of all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that have the mark all right or the name of the beast or the number of his name now those that receive that carnal mark all right the destruction that's coming upon them is going to be thermonuclear destruction which is that last and final plague and the third angel followed them, Revelation 14 and 9, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead, all right, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High that is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. All right, Esau knows certain scriptures and he knows how people think. He knows that once you take away bread, once you take away the normal, all right, once you make things hard for people, that they'll do anything to get those those things back. And that's the truth. So what are they they're gonna do? They're gonna be willing to make themselves perpetual slaves by taking that mark. All right, but those that take that mark are gonna be destroyed within the thermonuclear destruction, which is that last plate. All right, but those that are, are resist. All right, and those that remain faithful, all right, and believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shine and doing to the end, they're going to overcome this beast and this image and this mark. Revelation 15 and 1, and I saw uh, another angel, another sign in heaven, a great and marvelous, a great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plague, seven last plagues, and then them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And then that have gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on a sea of glass having the harps of the most high and they sing the song of moses the servant of the most high and the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are the works all right lord power almighty just and true are thy ways thou king of saints all right which the reason that they're singing the song of moses is because this is the second exodus all right, which this exodus is going to be even greater than the first. All right, the Lord is getting ready to deliver the children of Israel from around the world where they've been oppressed, where they've bared shame. All right, especially here within America. All right, in this place, which is, which is modern day Egypt or spiritually known as Egypt. All right, and the world is being smitten with plagues, just like the Lord's uh, smote the, the uh, Egyptians with plagues. All right, he's smiting the world with plagues as of this moment. All right. And he's going to uh, uh, free the children of Israel from the oppression that they're under all around the four corners of the world, which the children of Israel is the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but mainly from this north country. Jeremiah 23 and 7, it says, Therefore, behold, the day say, come, I set Yahweh, that they shall no more say, Yahweh liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But that Yahweh liveth, all right, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all the countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. All right, so really, all right, you people that are protesting against the governments, you should be angry and upset at them because they have kept secrets from you in regards to the people that they've oppressed, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the people that you have in disdain, the people that you hate, all right? Because of your oppressions and your ill dealings towards us, this is the reason that the Lord is judging this place, all right? He's judging the wicked. 